it's a frozen tundra outside. We got about two to three inches of snow. So let's do a video on adjusting the adjuster. Let's get to it. Welcome back to the McGolf Shop. Jim McCleary here, six time top 100 golf digest club fitter, where we talk about club fittings, club repairs, club reviews, golf opinions, all just so your scores will go low. Also, if you like doing, seeing this stuff live, if you like this stuff live, we have a live stream uh, on Mondays, every Monday at 5.30 p.m. or 17.30 Eastern Time. It's on YouTube and Facebook. Just look up me, Golf Custom Clubs. All right. So you notice I have a different hat on today, and the reason being is it came in red, white, and blue, and it comes with a flag on it. And they were the only people to actually answer my email about a part of this topic. So let's talk about adjusting the adjuster. So I get a lot of questions about when we talk about spine and flow, inevitably somebody will come up there and they'll say, But if I turn the shaft, it's no longer spine or flow. And they're not wrong, right? They're not wrong. And when you twist, on most cases, on most cases, uh, when you adjust the from where it's set and you let's say you put the spine and flow there when you set it and you go to turn it you turn the shaft yeah you're not you're not right where you were so duh however there is one out there that I do know of where it doesn't change now that being said the real question is do they make a difference do they actually change how do they work all these things we're going to answer okay so I have three different adjustable drivers in here I have the Callaway Rogue uh, STLS, right? I also have the new Mizuno STX220. Very nice with the uh, hazardous RDX in it. And I have the Strixon ZX5 for you guys, not of the US, or ZX5 for those in it. And it has the uh, Riptide in it, okay? And they all are a little bit different, and that's the reason why I wanted to show you these things, okay? The, the difference is you got to understand the basic functionality, and then you can kind of figure it out from there. So, number one is we got to know where we're starting. So we're going to go and measure these guys while we are uh, to figure out where our starting point is. So let's get doing some of that. So we're all on the same page. So what we what we're doing here, this is a loft and lie gauge. And the idea here is to do two axes of what we're looking for to ensure this thing is centered. Number one is this way, and so what I look for is to make sure that the bottom of the the bottom of the sole is sitting squarely on the bottom. There I like that. Okay. Then, and how do I find that? Well, I've got a set of lines on my, my pad here, and it helps, it helps me align. So I have that. Next is that it's going to be kind of, it's not going to be very intuitive, but if I set everything to a zero here, and I go to change it, and I set it back to the zero, the actual number should change. Does that understand? So we've got her squared up right here. We'll use a gauge to figure out what the actual loft is. And though it's not, it's not as technical as a as a digital, but it works. So this thing is sitting right at 12, and it looks to be 61 and a half. So we're going to write that down. Zuno driver is 12, 61.5. All right. Now the real question: What is it? Well, it's a 12 degree driver, so that's good. All right, now we go with the Strix on. All right. And that one looks like it needs to go up even more. There we go. So we got that one set. Looks like it needs to close up a little bit. There we go. 
So now we have it set in here. It looks like we're at 63. We're in the middle again. Looks like 10, so 63 and 10. And it's a 10-5, so we're pretty good. Six on 10, 63. And now a lefty driver, just to put a little bit of extra drama into the equation. <laughs> That's way up. That's a little bit better. Looks like 61. And are we square? Looks like we're square. like 9.5. What is this one? It's a 9.0. So we're close again. All right, so we have the, uh, we have our initials, right? So that brings up a topic of how close does close need to be, right? And what do I mean by close? Well, so manufacturing tolerances such as they are, uh, normal, you'll hear people plus or minus two degrees one way or another. That's a lot. Right? When you're talking about a difference between a 10 and a, a 12, that's a lot. You could be one whole club off. Now, the better club makers out there, the better OEMs, that tolerance is smaller. Right, I would say between a degree, about a degree, I would cut that in half. And, and that'd be, that, that's a pretty tight tolerance when you're talking about mass production of that. Now the question is, does the adjustability actually adjust, right? And before we get into that one, we have to talk about the torque wrenches, right? Torque wrenches. So you'll see in torque wrenches, we have three different torque wrenches, three different ones. Srixon, Mizuno, Callaway. They're all different makes and models. Are they the same? I can't find the information on that, short of me going out and buying a torque wrench, which has an old mechanic I probably should have, but uh, Callaway's talked about between 35 and 40 foot-pounds. That's not bad, and from using that, that's probably pretty close, right? But I do think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go buy one and let's check it out. But anyway, so the recommendation here is if you have the original torque wrench, use it on the original driver. Now, is it a crime if you don't? No, but just, you know, go with what, it's just like putting in oil from the car when they tell you this is the kind of oil that they would like for you to have. Is it a crime if you move it one way or to another or go to a synthetic brand? No, but it's not what they recommend. So this is what they recommend. I say go with what they recommend. So first and foremost, we'll talk about the Srixon. We're going to adjust each one of these. So what we do is you put it in there, and these are called torques, right? That's what's on the end of these guys, torques. That's what, that's what you get on them. You take it, and you loosen it up, take several turns. And now you have one a, one piece driver into two. Now what we see in this one is a this is a unique this is a unique um, tip. There's a lot going on on that tip. All right, you see all those numbers going on there. So you go from standard loft. It's, then you have a standard loft is uh, one degree closed, one degree open. Then you got minus one degree loft and it is open to. And then you have minus two, uh, you have a, a standard flat, you have a plus one loft. I mean, there's a lot going on here. How does it do that, right? How does it get to that point? Well, this one's a little different than some of the one, other ones you'd see. 
I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not, but if you look, there's a lot of, there's uh, little grooves, like here's a groove right here in this guy. There's a groove, there's grooves in this thing. Here's a groove on top right there. There's a groove right there. There's grooves in order to get them into their zeros. All right. And, and, the, and then what I would normally say is that this thing is, uh, normally what you see is a tilt and you're going to see that here in a minute. And what this has, this has a truckload of adjustments on it. The question is, do they, right? So let's, let's put that to the challenge. So first thing we want to do is, uh, we want standard loft face angle. Let's go with a standard, it says standard FL. I'm going to go with standard flat on that one. And let's check that out. We're going to go to open, standard flat where it's open. All right. So if we go to put this down into the zero, Again, we should see some different numbers than what we saw before. All right, so we got that. And then here's another one. All right, everybody's like, how many clicks? I do two. Why? Well, because it, it's a breakaway torque wrench. That's what they're called, all right? They're breakaway torque wrenches. So when you get to, when you get to the designated torque, it just releases and so you can't put any more. Well, then why can't you do just one? Well, you could. I put two on there just as a insurance policy, just in case the first one went early. And you get the second one and you know that you're set. Now, it, well, then how about three, four, and five? Well, you could, but there's such a thing as overdoing it. And you can't, there's a point, there's always been this ideal that on breakaways that you add just a little bit more each time you do that. If that's the case, then you keep click, 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 click. You really have the opportunity of busting the screw. And we've seen a bunch of those in here. All right, so we now have the Mizuno one. And the Mizuno one is, is, is pretty much the, the ideal here. Now, Mizuno works in a different way in that there's, on the bottom in this guy, there's scallops. And the scallops are pieces like that in which the head, the opposite of the scallops, that's where it's grabbed. Where on the other one, it had a small gear on the bottom. This is where it's being grabbed. This is where it seats. Now this one goes, it has a standard loft. It goes minus one, plus one, plus two, plus one up, three up, uh, minus one up, and then it goes down to minus one or minus two. So you got, there's a lot of adjustment that's available here, right? So now if you look, See how it doesn't look just exactly straight and how it's kind of rotating around? That's how it gets there, all right? So, and we're only talking a degree or two. We're not talking huge amounts of change. And that's the idea here, because if you get huge amounts of change, just get, a, get you a 10 degree and brrr, all over the place. Well, the dynamics are not the same throughout these heads. So what it does is it just ever so slightly turns, all right? And those ever so slight turns gives you those degrees. When you change things, when you go to, um, in most cases, when you go to add loft, it tends to close, all right? When you tend to take away loft, it tends to open. And that's what the ellipsis does here. So again, we're gonna check this out and we're gonna go to the plus two because going to one degree, why do I want to do one degree? I want to do one degree because, or two degrees because uh, there's just human error involved, right? Some of these things, uh, I, two degrees is easier to find than one. So let's make sure that we're doing that. There's those two. All right, last but not least is the Callaway Club. Now the Callaway Club is different in that it relies on cogs. All right, the cogs are what change everything. And I, and I need to address the idea that when you do these adjustments, they're all made from the back end, this part of the club, not this side, not this side. They're all in the back. So keep that in mind. So if you have lines or standards or whatever words that say, they all need to be facing 
into the back side. All right. So in this particular instance, in this particular instance, we have cogs. And this cog is sitting at neutral and standard. That means basically nothing's changing. Now, this has letters and numbers, all right? The letters, you'll have neutral and D. There's one S in here and that's also standard. The D is the draw face. So it's talking about whether it's closed or open. So this thing sits here or it does like this. It doesn't very much go the other way. And, it, and it'll adjust to plus or minus one degree and then plus two degrees. All right, so the, each one of these has a limitation what they're doing. This one's just a little bit more straightforward. So you move these, you move those cogs and you line them to this line right here to get what you want. So right now it's neutral and standard. So we're just gonna take it and we're gonna make it neutral and two. All right, neutral and two. Now the, the thing about this guy is, going back, when we go to put this back on, the shaft did not, in, in the other two cases, you have to rotate the shaft to a different orientation in order to get to the loft or face angle that you're looking for. When using this, you don't, right? It stays in the same rotation. You're remove, you're turning the cogs, and so the shaft stays in the same orientation. And that's a, uh, so if you're worried about your spine and flow, this is a good uh, company to use or a good idea to use in order to get to maintaining all your attributes in the same fashion. So let's go back and let's see if we actually made an adjustment. Okay, starting with the Mizuno, and we went to a, a bigger number, right? So if we did this correctly, we should be looking at 61 and a half and somewhere around a 14 degree club. So let's see if we got it. All right, that's good and centered again. Right around that 61 and a half. I think, oh, I might be a little bit much. There we go. So just, just under 62, just over 61 and a half. So that's about in the same area. Like I said, can be uh, eyeballing, can give you that human error, but let's see what we got here. And we're looking at about 13 and a half. So there you go. So again, a half a degree, I'm gonna give them that because I could be eyeballing it off. A half a degree is just so, so tiny. So yeah, it did make an adjustment. Oh, so on this guy, we're going flat. So let's see what happens here. That was 63 and 10. So let's see what happens here. That's pretty good. Yeah, I like that. So we got 60, I got 60, so I went a little bit more. So that's not bad. Let's see what we got here as far as the number. Now I said it would open some, so maybe we're gonna see a different number here. And nope, it just changed, it went to flat. That's a good thing. All right, so it did, exact, it did what it's supposed to do, right? It got flatter, maybe a little bit more, and again, it's eyeballing, so, you know, a, a half a degree to a degree I'm good with, but yeah, it, it's doing its job. Now this guy, so we are just adding loft on this one as well and we come back around here all right so we should be looking around 61 and 11 that's uh, pretty close let's see what else we got here uh, a little bit more, there we go. And 11, huh, all right, I'd like to show you. There's 11. So all in all, it did what it was supposed to. It's sitting at 61, 
and we are at 61 so it did it did exactly what they were supposed to do okay so so that's adjusting the golf club right the they did what they were supposed to do now they went and as you saw every one of them got there in a different fashion whether it was Mizuno with the scallops grabbing on at the top and seating at the bottom or it was the Srixon with the uh, scoops or the grooves that were in the length of the adapter with a gear on the bottom or if it was just changing cogs and maintaining the same orientation and still seating at the bottom they all worked right they all worked so it's all depend so you get your you'll get your settings and with, we're talking within a, each one of these companies were well within a half a degree to be honest so that's really that's to say something about production quality right Production quality is very, very high, at least in these three. So not to, so not to underestimate the, the difference. Some people say, oh, it doesn't change. Well, uh, it is, right? It is really seeing that. Even with the naked eye, that's the reason why I wanted to go to two degrees so people would see the difference. So we're seeing that. So what we're seeing is in most cogs where, or in most adapters where it's, you have to rotate the, we have to rotate the shaft, it's normally because it's not straight up and down, it's cocked, and then that, that is what's causing the turning. So when you get, in those cases, when you change one parameter, you may end up changing another one. Now, as we've seen in the Mizuno and the other one, that there were some other options just to go flat with the same, same loft, or to go up <laughs> in, the same, in the same lie angle, and they worked. So that's a pretty good idea. So somebody's figuring this out. And then Callaway with the with the cogs, and we saw that it did what it was supposed to do. So that there's dr adjusting your driver in a nutshell. So a couple of things to remember: use the torque wrench that's given. Click it only about twice because you don't want to overdo it, nor nor do you want to underdo it. All right? Know that if you are seeing a higher or a lower ball flight than you expected. It could be that the it got the club got past QA and your loft angle or your lie angle might be off just ever so slightly and tweaking it to get to where you want to go, not necessarily a bad thing. Now in the in the past, people have done studies. 90% of the people that have adjustable clubs don't adjust. Okay. The 10% of that 10%, 90% of those adjust it once and they're done. Which is the fine to tweak in their or dial in their their desired ball flight, and the last of that one percent, you guys are the tweakers. You guys are the guys that just you know have got the doing this and looking at wind speed and adjusting your stuff to making sure that it's there each time in a row. Again, nothing wrong with that. You just in a you're in a class all by yourself. <laughs> so there it is. That's what I wanted to show you. Adjusting golf clubs, they really do work. Multiple ways to get there. If you're worried about spine and flow, there's basically one place you got to go for that. Outside of that, uh, everything tends to work, right? Tends to work. So again, if you have any questions, put them in the show notes below. Join us uh, for our live stream Mondays at 5.30 Eastern Time. And as always, let's see your scores go low. <laughs>